ever wondered what makes an electrical machine efficient and green? Jean-Philippe is going to tell us exactly what. Hi, Jean-Philippe. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. So what makes an electrical machine efficient and green? Well, the, the goal of our research is, is to make the electrical machine very efficient and more green. Uh, that means that um, our goal is to design electrical rotating machine and power transformer which consumes less energy as possible. That's the first point. The second point is uh, to make them as green as possible. For example, we try to, av to avoid to use a solvent in the process of insulation uh, of, the, uh, of the copper wires. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a, a good example. And there is another dimension also concerning the reliability of the electrical equipment. For example, for aeronautic applications, we have to make the machine as safe as possible. So that's also dimensions in, uh, in our research. So efficiency, uh, reliability, um, making the machine as green as possible, that's um, the topics of uh, our researches. And I think that they are very important for the energy transition. How would you say that uh, your work and the projects you work in uh, assist the energy transition in Europe? Of course, it's uh, an actual point uh, because we have to save energy and to make uh, all the devices, especially for transportation, for e-mobility, uh, as safe as possible, but uh, as efficient as possible. So the, the goal is to um, make the motorization with um, uh, LCA uh, improved mm -hmm. with less carbon, uh, especially for e-mobility applications. Let's, uh, let's use a specific example, if we can. For example, in this factory here where we are, what is the project you're working in? Oh, we, are, uh, we have a common project with this factory we help them to design an electrical machine with a high efficiency, low mass, because the, the, the power to mass ratio is very important for e-mobility application. And we try to uh, use material with a low um, environ environmental footprint. Mm -hmm. So we help this company with this project to design the machine. And for example, we use electrical steel of um, with very specific electrical steel, with low losses. It allows to save energy. Mm -hmm. And we plan to use, for example, not copper, but aluminum. Yeah. In the global LCA of the machine, it could be very benefit. So the, the research lab um, that I manage uh, helped this company to design this electrical machine. You mentioned aluminum as, a, as an efficient way of um, uh, creating electrical machines. However, uh, my idea would be that it is not as sustainable and green as it should be. So how does Laboratoire System Electrotechnique uh, Environment uh, actually promote sustainability if you use aluminum? Aluminum could be a greener solution for, for the wires because uh, it's easier to produce aluminum yeah. and we can get aluminum in uh, large quantities. For copper, it is estimated that we have approximately 50 euros on the earth after we have to use yeah. recycled copper. So probably with not the same performance. So basically it is economically more viable. Of course, more also, viable. yes. Yeah. yes. And Aluminium this is, is cheaper than uh, Exactly, uh, and of copper. course it, that adds in an economical efficiency or let's say in a cycle economy, right? Right. Is this also part of, uh, uh, of the laboratory's, um, uh, let's say, focus points to find the cheapest solution also? We keep that in mind because <laughs> for uh, transportation, for automotive application, um, the, the, the economical uh, aspect is very important and they, they have to produce with the lowest cost as possible. So. We yeah. keep that in mind in, in our research. Without, however, sacrificing efficiency, uh, safety. Yeah. Can we, can we uh, discuss a little bit safety? What measures do you take so that your, uh, let's say, solutions are safe for the environment, for people, 
for uh, for everything that they follow if you if if you will the rules and regulations of the European Commission there are different levels in, in our approach um, the first level concerns the components we try to use um, greener components um, I, I was talking about the solvent for example yeah. we try to avoid using solvent for wiring solution production that's the first point Safety is also for the, um, the life of the machine. For um, aeronautic application, the, mach the machine has to be very safe. And um, there is a tendency to improve the DC bus voltage and, um, for in planes. And the consequences is that in the machine, there is a phenomenon called partial discharges depending on the pressure, especially when the plane is in the sky. Yeah. So when the voltage is too, low, is too high, the problem appears more easily. So we try to make the machines which can resist, which can support the partial discharge, and machines which can work as long as possible. That's mm -hmm. another part, another view of the safety for electrical machines and, and for the passengers. Yeah. Let's go back to the energy sector a little bit. Although that was a nice trip with uh, aeronautics. Uh, can you please tell me other projects your lab is involved in, in the energy sector more specifically? In fact, we have many projects of different sizes. Mm -hmm. We have a European project currently about, um, the name is uh, iEco Wire, and the goal is to produce a wire insulated without solvent and uh, the cable is able uh, can support it can work at temperature which is about 300 degrees traditionally it's between 180 degrees up to 240 degrees and with this project we plan to reach 300 degrees mm -hmm. when the machine can work at higher temperature you can make it um, smaller so it has a, a positive impact on efficiency. So that's a, a European project. Yeah. Another example is the design of an electrical machine, a very efficient electrical machine with a very high uh, power to mass ratio. Uh, it's a project supported by um, the French agency mm. uh, of research yeah. um, and the consortium groups, the uh, IFP, the French Institute of Petroleum, mm -hmm. um, a research test center, the Critem Doza, um, a, a small company, and my lab. There is also a project on a university level that your uh, laboratory is involved in. Can you please elaborate a little bit on that? Yes, I'm involved in a project. It's a project of platform called Tech3E energy efficiency environment and the goal of this platform is to offer to companies a space with um, equipments that the company can use with the uh, the people of the lab or themselves okay and uh, uh, that way they can uh, make test characterization they can uh, evaluate the performance of the electrical machines mm -hmm at the earth of this platform. So it's a very big project. For example, we are able to, to test electrical machine for um, automobile. We have a very big test bench of two, um, 250 kilowatts and uh, 20,000 uh, APM. So um, all the man car manufacturers can come uh, in this platform to test their, uh, their e-motors. We can test also the insulation, etc. So the idea is uh, to welcome the people in the platform from one day, one week, or many months to do tests together. And um, a building will be done, will be made um, next year. So we have um, a bigger space of uh, one um, one thousand and five hundred square meters to welcome the companies. So it's a nice project at the earth of the university. So we discussed so far on a European level or on a national level and on a university level. Can we also focus a little bit on a regional level? 
about the regional project. So we have this pro the project with Move and Tech, the company mm -hmm. where we are here today, and we have also many many projects with companies of middle size. Uh, for example, we have an historic collaboration with Tyson Group Electrical Steel. There is a plant which produces grain-oriented electrical steel, mm -hmm. and we are collaborating with them uh, since 2006. So, for the Laboratoire System Electrotechnique et Environnement, that's a real and strong collaboration with uh, Tyson Group Electrical Steel. Um, we are working also with Amphenol Group, uh, which is based in the region of de France. And the characteristic of the lab is also to work with very small companies, startups, companies with one person who want to develop an activity uh, or propose an innovation. We like to collaborate with companies, in fact. So basically from startups to, to governments. Yes, and to big groups, yes. Yeah, right. Jean-Philippe, thank you very much for this interesting conversation. You are welcome. And thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and join our community.